Filming weddings can be a great way for new filmmakers to make money while learning the basics of storytelling. When I started off, I didn't really know what it was I should even be bringing with me or what I should be shooting. In this video, I'm gonna share with you seven things I learned over the years that can make you a successful wedding filmmaker. Hi, I'm Brandon Wilson. I'm a full-time filmmaker. I own two different companies. This channel's purpose is to help inspire up and coming filmmakers to chase after their dreams. I wanna teach you from the things I've done right as well as the things I've done wrong. If you're worried about not being able to stand out in the crowd, don't worry. Every filmmaker has a style and every style I believe has an audience. So there is a place for you there. If that sounds like you, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and join our community. Let's get in the video. Knowing what to pack and how to pack is going to be tip number one. I bring three different things with me. The first is my Pelican case. This house is my cameras, my glass, my drone, and my audio equipment. Second is gonna be the backpack, and that works like a utility bag for me. I put my double and triple A batteries in there, any sort of lens wipes I might need, and initially it carries my gimbal until we arrive at the venue and then I convert it into more of a run and gun kit. The last thing is gonna be my large duffel bag. I put all my tripods and light stands in there along with the lights in their cases. I bring extension cords and some battery chargers that all go into this large duffel bag. Most of the time that doesn't come out of my car unless it's a venue where everything is gonna happen at this venue. Then I'll look for a gear closet that I can stick everything inside of. So one way you can know exactly how to plan is actually tip number two, and that's gonna be knowing the timeline, but more specifically the photographer's timeline. If you don't have it, you can always ask the bride if she has it. If she doesn't, I would ask for the contact information of the photographer and see if they're willing to give it to you. So I'm gonna give you a scenario of exactly what I do when I show up to a wedding. I find the photographer and I usually go over their timeline with them. And I'll say something like, I notice you're starting with the details. I'm actually gonna start behind you shooting the venue and then I'll come find you in about 20 minutes and I'll take any of the details you've finished and I'll start shooting those. This does a couple things. Now you're letting the photographer know you have no plans to step on their toes and you'll probably have a better day working with them just because you started off the day doing them a favor, not getting in their way. Another reason to know photographer's timeline is you can kind of see where they plan to take the couple out on shoots. Sometimes as videographers, we'll get left behind and it's our job to make sure that doesn't happen. Tip number three is gonna be without a doubt the most important tip and that's knowing your camera setting. Moments come and go at a very fast pace at weddings and the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is fumble around with your camera, trying to figure out what does what while all these moments pass by. I recommend setting up custom function buttons that way you know where your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture is at all times. You don't have to worry about it. That way when these moments happen, you're there capturing the best image possible. I wanna show you guys a quick example of why it's important to know your camera settings. And that's going to be this ceremony right here. Now I was a solo shooter for this ceremony and I had one backup cam and then I was floating. We had a plan, I had talked to the guys who were lighting the stage and the way the stage was lit was supposed to be how it stayed the entire ceremony. But right here, you're gonna see whoever was running lights just blasted up the lights out of nowhere, completely destroying the image in my backup cam. But right here, you see me start to adjust really quickly because the bride just happened to be coming down the aisle at this moment. So had I not been able to go through my camera functions really quickly and get it to look the way I wanted to, I would have missed the groom's first look at the bride and I would have missed the bride coming down the aisle. Tip number four is going to be audio. And you're gonna to wanna to invest some money in good audio equipment. I've seen a lot of wedding films that had good visuals, but then when the talking started, it was very choppy, giving it a generic feeling. Being able to deliver a good soundscape will actually separate you from everybody in your area. I recommend using the Zoom H6 this will allow you to capture live sound as well as taking feeds from the DJ board via XLR or quarter inch cable. And then on top of that, I also recommend using lav mics during the ceremony. I lav the officiant and the groom. If she's up for it, I'll even lav the bride. Tip number five is a big one because it can bring you in a lot more referrals and that's going to be working with vendors. You'll find that the DJ, the planner, and the photographer are gonna be people you see probably multiple times over a wedding season. So the last thing you want is a bad relationship with people you spend time with. Building a good relationship with a wedding planner can bring you in a lot more leads. They're planning weddings all year long and the bride and groom will ask their planners if they have any recommendations for vendors. 
last thing you want to be is the vendor who doesn't get recommended by anybody because you're tough to work with. Be somebody who's easy to work with, even when you're dealing with people who aren't easy to work with. You should strive your hardest to build good relationships and just be someone that people enjoy being around. All right, so we're moving on to tip number six, and that's going to be stabilizers. You're going to want to use some form of stabilization throughout the day, whether that's a monopod, a fly cam, or a gimbal. But when you're first starting off, more than likely you're not going to have the steadiest hands. If you do, then absolutely go for it. But having stabilization in the beginning can definitely help out because the last thing you're going to want to do is go into an edit and just have tons of shaky movement. So that leads us to the seventh and final tip, and that's going to be shoot for the edit. Now I meet the bride and groom three times before their wedding day, so I try to have a really good understanding of their vibe and who they are as individuals. So oftentimes before their wedding, I have their music already picked out, so I know what their wedding film is going to feel like when I show up to the shoot. That way as I go throughout the day, I can keep in mind the songs and kind of the things I had in mind as I'm shooting shots and I could put sequences together that make sense to that music and then this just helps my overall post-production project and it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. So these tips are more suggestions and opinions of things that help me out, help me get more weddings, help me be successful as a wedding videographer. If you haven't already, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and we will see you in the next video.